I'm going to show you three different sheds and the decorating ideas that inspired them. And then we'll go on to some easy bonus shed decorating ideas after that. It's Alexandra here from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog. And I'll put links to any resources I mention in the description below. And if you're new here, the Middle Sized Garden uploads weekly with tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden. So if you want to see the videos when you open up YouTube, tap the subscribe button. And if you'd like YouTube to tell you when a new video is uploaded, tap the notifications bell. We're going to start off in this shed that's standing behind me, talking to Richard Iron. And this shed actually used to be a corrugated iron lean-to. So Richard, tell me what this was like when you were first came here and what you wanted to do with it. Well, when we here arrived, this was just a roof and just post, and it was an open shed just full of clutter. And so we decided we needed a potting shed and we needed to make it look attractive. So there were really three design criteria and one inspiration that guided us. And the first thing was it had to look pretty. We are right outside uh, the back door of the house, the route that we go through into the garden every day. And so we just needed something that looked attractive as, a, as the entrance really uh, to the garden. So Pretty was the first thing. The second was that uh, we wanted it to look at the same age as the house. The house was built in the 1880s, which is quite old for Australia. Uh, and so we followed the same design criteria for the shed. And so we tried to make it look, look put the part. And uh, the third uh, design criteria was it had to be cheap. <laughs> uh, uh, we didn't want to spend a great deal of money on it. So I did all the work and we used recycled wood all you know, for everything. I managed to borrow or steal a door. Uh, we bought a very cheap uh, little stained glass window from the local auction room and I built these windows, learnt how to do that off YouTube. And so those are the three criteria. But we also had this inspiration because I had been um, some time ago uh, into a wonderful old early 19th century potting shed in Faversham in England. And when you went in, it was as if nobody had been there for the last 50 years. The old gardener's coat was still hanging on the back of the door. Uh, it was all panelled wood inside, which is what we've tried to do here. All of the, uh, the, uh, the tool garden tools were hanging on wooden pegs, and so that's what we've tried to do here. And inside the door on the wooden panelling was pinned from the Faversham Horticultural Society, first prize in roses from 1911. So that's what we've also done here. So we were absolutely inspired by that potting shed in England. And we've tried, of course this isn't the same size, but we've tried to recreate the same sort of feel and atmosphere in it. I looked for ages to try and find an old uh, seed chest. And apart from buying, uh, spending £25,000 on a Regency seed chest, we eventually found an old Japanese apothecary's chest, which doubles up for the same thing um, with us. And it's still got some of the Japanese labels on it for cigarettes, and <laughs> scissors and thread and that sort of stuff. So that's what we use uh, for our seed chest. And then tell me floors, walls, pegs, what were they made of? All wood, so sort of all shiplap for the, for the walls. Uh, the benches I, I made from old floorboards, actually originally from the house because the, some of the boards were replaced. And so everything you know, looks as though it was made maybe you know, 100 years ago. And you've also actually got a rather clever thing in here on the surface, which came, I think, from a Victorian potting shed. That's right. I mean, so the idea uh, is that when you're doing your potting, you're always spilling potting mix. And potting mix, you know, you don't want to waste. It's too expensive. So at the end of the day, you know, you just brush it all into the, through the slats into the container below. And next time you're potting, you just use the same potting mix. Uh, and we use it all the time. Yeah, wonderful yeah. idea, I think, mm, yeah. yes. You've decided to put a window box on the front. Did you make that as well? Yeah, well, again, rule number one, it needs to look pretty. Also, I made that out of some wood that somebody lent me, or gave me rather, and uh, so we rotate the window boxes by, by the season. So they're, they're plastic troughs inside here, which uh, we can then replace. And the colour scheme, I mean, you've used lots of different colours. Did you make that one up or where did the inspiration come from? Well, uh, the colour scheme is actually different from the house, uh, which is, looks a bit odd. But we deliberately went for this scheme because this was the original scheme for the house when the house was built in 1888. And so we wanted to try and see what it looked like with the idea that when it comes time to repaint the house, if we liked it, this is what we were going to paint it. And we do like it, so we are going to repaint it from our shed. 
And I think you've also got rather a grand chicken coop, haven't you, painted in the colours of the house? Exactly right, yes. Which you also made. Well, yes. Uh, uh, again, learnt completely off YouTube, but it has to look, look like the house. So I had to learn how to make a slate roof which is actually much more difficult than it, <laughs> than it appears. And the pile of broken slates was as high as the chicken shed by the time I finished. Right. But I got there in the end. And actually, this roof is, in fact, the original one from that lean-to, isn't it? You That's just correct. built it round yeah. the roof. Absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. So the original corrugated iron has, has just, just remained. Yeah. And now we'll go over to Stephen Ryan of the Horticulturalists YouTube video channel, because Stephen has two sheds in his garden, which he's actually done in very different ways, although they do look quite the same. So I'm here with Stephen Ryan and Matthew Lucas of the Horticulturalists video channel and they talk a lot about plants but actually Stephen's got some real interesting things in the garden in terms of sheds and he's just been telling me that when people come into the nursery because he also has a nursery called Dixonia Rare Plants near Melbourne that they say oh, I want something really fast growing so that it'll hide an ugly shed and so Stephen What's your reply? <laughs> My reply is always, why have you got an ugly shed? I mean, really, when you think about it, we spend most of our lives working in a garden. And I mean, we renovated a whole house so that it wouldn't look ugly in a garden. So why on earth wouldn't you renovate a shed and make it look attractive? Or make it a, a vista point for a walkway such as this one here, to so actually make something of it rather than hide it and apologize for it. Yes. So, Stephen, now you've actually built one of these sheds, yep. and but also you had a really ugly shed here when you started. <laughs> so yes. you Did got you, two Stephen? Yes. yes, you Tell did. Tell us. So, All right. So yeah. start, tell me first about the shed that you inherited. renovated. Yes. Inherited and yeah. renovated. All right. Well, the shed I, I, I ended up with on the block, it was very funny. Well, it wasn't funny. The original house burnt down in the Ash Wednesday bushfires, the shed didn't. So the, there was a shed on the block and nothing else. And it had been obviously built by the homeowner uh, and it was made out of pieces of leftover corrugated iron of several different hues. Mm -hmm. So, and they were all over the place, you know, they had stuck another piece on top of another piece and with a flat roof. So when we took over the block and built the house, the house originally was flat roofed as well matched the shed but we decided to go up and put a second story on the house and what we actually did was we renovated the shed first so that we could use it like a template so we put a pitched roof on it to see whether the angle suited us we put finials on it to see how they looked we then put uh, weatherboard walls on we then painted it the colors we were assuming we would like to paint the house so we were doing everything on a small scale so that if something didn't actually work when we got to it, we could then adjust it for the house. So we used it as a template and it worked really, really well. So I was very pleased with it. Our colours we thought were good. Uh, the pictures were fine. Getting rid of the tin walls was fantastic. And we put a couple of little windows into it. It's now an attractive part of the garden instead of just being something to put the mower in. That's excellent. And I think I should probably say at this point, because I didn't really explain, is that of course the middle sized garden is based in South East England, which is in Kent, and the horticulturalists are based near Melbourne in Australia. In fact, as you can see, we grow a lot of the same plants. The horticulturalists have hotter summers. They don't have quite such cold winters, but they do have quite cold winters. And so we're talking almost about equating to a USDA hardiness zone of nine. Not that hardiness zones really matter when it comes to sheds, but I just thought people <laughs> yeah, might. <laughs> well, uh, you might want to line your shed inside so that it's nice and warm for the winter <laughs> if you happen to live in Alaska. But um, yeah, so we've got a concrete floor. We've got properly lined sheds. We don't get condensation forming. You've got enough light so that light gets in so that if you're ratting around in the shed, you don't trip over things so easily. Um, and it's got high enough ceilings that you don't have to duck as you go in. I mean, a shed should be a comfortable place to go into. Yeah, and absolutely. so that's all the things we did. And now tell us about this second shed. This right. is the one behind us, the one with the vista. Yes, now this shed, we needed an, an extra shed because we use one for storage of certain things. We use the other one for storage of other things. So that we, it can confuse issues a little ha having two sheds, but the other one was uh, unchangeable so we couldn't make it bigger so that we'd have more storage space so a second shed needed to be built now this shed we used basically the same patterns that we used for the previous one because it worked so we used the same roof pitch we used the same colors 
Uh, we clad it in um, Western Red Cedar weatherboards like the other shed was. Uh, but the biggest difference with this shed uh, is that it was in fact at the end of two vistas. So it needed to become part of the scenery. We didn't want to hide it. We wanted it to look pretty enough that people would walk around the corner onto the path, look up at the shed and go, wow. how cute is that? Uh, so we don't spend any time trying to hide the shed. And actually, you've been quite careful. You've positioned the door centrally to the path, haven't yep. you? And then on the other side, you've positioned the window centrally to the other path. Yeah, exactly. So that uh, there would be nothing more off-putting to you if you were walking along a path and the shed door was there or the shed window was there instead of being aligned right to the center so by doing that it might seem a little bit sort of on the spectrum but it certainly works from a visual perspective so suddenly we've got a shed that's actually a feature in the garden so matthew are yes. you doing anything special with sheds in your garden uh, no, we're actually not going to have one, Alexandra. So we have less than a middle-sized garden. It's actually tiny. It's a Victorian house with a small front garden and a courtyard. So it is actually the big question, where do I put pots and potting mix and tools? Mm. TBC, you'll have to fly over and do a special on that. But I've, I love the way that Craig and Stephen have organised their garden so that these things become really theatrical and interesting and you want to open the white door and see what's inside. So who knows, but I'll, I'll take some inspiration and you'll have to come over and have a look when I finally make a decision. Thank I'll you. look forward to that. And Stephen, could you just tell me a little bit, but actually not too much, about, <laughs> <laughs> about the succulent roof? Are you trying to shut him up? No, out of yeah. <laughs> it's just That's the, a losing <laughs> battle. <laughs> the thing is that the succulent roof, it's, I've never seen a sloping succulent roof before. I think it looks gorgeous. But having watched your video on it, I don't think I'm ever going to do no, it. No, and, and nor should anybody, really. But it was all part of the plan. Because we had this shed and there was a window that was central to the, the view, the vista, there was a big piece of roof there. And dare I say, I hate to waste space. Uh, so I don't know, I had this rush of blood, decided that it would be a good idea to create a tapestry of succulents on the roof of the shed. And yes, you need to go and look at the video to understand just how complicated it turned out to be. But you know, in the long term, it's worked out to be, again, something that's made the shed unique, interesting and part of the garden instead of having to hide it. And now for some bonus ideas. I do appreciate that there's a certain level of DIY skill needed for the sheds we've mentioned already, although, of course, you could also pay someone if you've got the budget. But one of the easiest things you can do to make your shed look more attractive is to paint it. We've painted the shed on our terrace exactly the same shade as we've painted the front door and also the kitchen wall. So we've taken a theme through the house and taken it out into the garden. And I think that can work very well. My friend Rosie has got an absolutely bright pink shed in her garden. And although that sounds extraordinary, it works very well because her garden has a, a pink theme. It's a relatively small garden, so it's not a garden she wants to get too many different colours in. And there are lots of other different colours that you can play with with sheds. And so here are just a few to give you a little bit of inspiration. So do tell me what you think your best shed decorating ideas are. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.